All right, today we're going to review the Unit 4 pre-assessment so you can follow along and make corrections and use it as a study guide for the upcoming test. Um, number one, it says fill in the boxes to find the product using the standard multiplication algorithm. So all we have to do is go through and fill in the missing spots. So first we start with the number um, seven in the ones place. So seven times four is 28. We have an eight and we carry our two. And then we have seven times five is 35, plus two would make 37. So we put our seven here, and the three is already there for us. Now that we're done with that one, we can cross that number off, drop the zero, and we move over to multiply the six. Six times four is 24, there's a four, and then I would need to carry another two. Six times five is 30, plus two, which would make 32. So two, and I have no spot to carry my three, so it's just dropped straight down to make 3,240. Now all I have to do is add my numbers together. Eight plus zero is eight. Seven plus four is 11, carry my one. So I have one plus three is four, five, six. And then I drop my three down, 3,618 is my final answer. Okay, on um, the next one, I know it's kind of hard to see, but um, on the next one, I have 387 times 72. Again, I'm gonna start with the two. So two times seven is 14, I have a four, carry my one. Two times eight is 16, plus one is 17. So I'm gonna drop my seven and carry another one. Two times three is six, plus one is seven, where I get the seven there. Okay, now I have to move on to the next one. I'm done with that. I have to drop my zero, hold my place value, and then I can start multiplying. Seven times seven is 49, so I have a nine, and I have to add four. So then um, seven times eight is 56, plus four is 60. So I drop my zero, and then I carry my six. Seven times three is 21, plus six would make 27. There's a seven and there's no place to carry my two over, so it just drops right on down. So I have 27,090. Now all I have to do is add those up. Four plus zero is four. Nine plus seven is 16. Seven plus one is eight. We have seven and two. So 27,864 for my final answer. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing on this one. The next one, it says use standard algorithm to find 25 times 448. So it does say standard algorithm, so I can't use any other strategy if I want full credit. Okay, so my problem is 448, I always like to put the biggest number on top, times 25. Okay, and I'm gonna start with the red first. Multiplying my five out, so five times eight is 40, zero, carry my four. Five times four is 20, plus four is 24, add my two. Five times four is 20 again, plus two, so I have 22. Okay, I'm done with the red. Now I'm gonna move on, cross off my five, drop my zero, and now it's time to use the two. Two times eight is 16, six, carry my one, Two times four is eight, plus one is nine. Two times four is eight, so I have eight. Now all I have to do is add them all together. So zero plus zero is still zero. Six plus four is 10, so I have a zero and carry my one. One plus two is three, plus nine is 12. One plus two is three, plus eight is 11. So I have 11,200 as my final answer. Okay, on to the next part. We have fractions. 3 4th of 48 is, so 75 times 48 equals, okay, so I'm gonna do um, this kind of over here on my extra space of paper here. Um, so 3 4 of 48 is same thing as saying 3 4 times 48. Okay, well I know, I'm gonna break this down a little easier. I know that one half of 48 equals 24. That's easy for me to do in my head. So I know if I cut it in half again, 
1 fourth of 48, that's gonna be half of this, because a fourth is half of a half. So 1 fourth of 48 is going to be 12. So if 1 fourth of 48 is 12, and I need 3 fourths, 3 fourths times 48, is it gonna be the same thing as 12 times 3? 12 times 3 is 36. So 3 fourths times 48 equals 36. So 36 would be my final answer. So 75 times 48, how can I use this information to find the answer for this one? Well, 3 fourths of a dollar equals 75 cents or 75 hundredths. So if 3 fourths of a dollar equals 75 hundredths and 3 fourths of 48 is 36, all I need to do is move my 36 two decimal places over. So instead of 36, I add two more place values and I now have 3600. So that's how you can use this problem to help you solve this one. On my next problem, problem number four, I have one fourth of 64. I'm gonna start again with a half. I know that one half of 64 equals 32. So half of that would be a fourth. So one fourth would be 16. So one fourth of 64 is 16. Well, one fourth is the same thing as 25 cents or 25 hundredths. So if I have 25 times 64, now all I have to do is move my decimal to place values. So I know I have 16 and I have to move two place values, one, two. So it would be 1,600. Okay, I have four more problems down at the bottom. Um, number five, mark each of the equations true or false. Um, you can use mental math or estimation. You may have, you may be able to get the correct answers to some without doing all the computation involved. Yay, that's exciting, right? If you don't have to actually do all the math, you can use some of your strategies to try and figure it out. So I'm going to get a piece of scratch paper because I don't have a lot of room on this. Um, so my first one is 32 times four equals 1280 divided by 10. So I know that 30 times four is 120. So if I do 30 times four plus two times four and break it apart, then I would have 120 plus eight, which would get me 128, okay? Well, if my, if my problem says, if this is 128, and my problem says 128 equals 1280 divided by 10. Well, if I move this over one place value, so if I move this side one place value, cross off this zero and make it a one, I would have to cross off this zero. Well, then I can see that it's the same thing as 1000 or 128 divided by one is 128 or 1280 divided by 10 is still going to be 128. So my answer would be true, okay? And if that didn't make sense, you can also check it because one times 128 is 128 and 10 would be 1280, right? And your ratio table and those are all, those are both equivalent fractions. Okay, on my next one for B, I'll flip this over. For B, I have 342 times 28. I'm gonna use a ratio table because I like it. So if I have 342, or one times 342 is 342, I'm gonna jump to 10, which would be 3,420, right? I have to get to 28. So if I double that, I'd have 6,840, which would give me 20. So now, I know it says 28, but I'm gonna jump to 30 because it's easier. So I'm gonna add these two together, which would then make 10,260, and that would be 30, okay? So I know it's somewhere in the 10,000 range, 
okay, somewhere close to that because this is 30 and that's 28, so I kind of estimated and or rounded. Um, so I need to see 3,828. Can I div divide that by three? Is that close to 10,000? Okay, well, I know that um, one times three is three. 10 times three is 30. Um, 100 times three is 300, but I have 3,000 here. So 3,000 times three would be, I'm sorry, 1,000 times three would be 3,000. So if I have 3,000 divided by three, I have 38, 28. But if I had 3,000 divided by three, my answer would be 1,000. So this answer is going to be more than 1,000 because 3, 8, 2, 3. Remember, division is the opposite of multiplication. So this would be 3 times what equals 3,823. If I estimate, I know this is going to be greater than 1,000, but there's no way that it's going to be 10,000. There's just no way because 3 times 10,000 would be 30,000, right? Not 3,800. So this answer is definitely false. Okay, my next problem, I have 58 times 99. And for that one, I'm gonna use the over strategy. It's one of my favorites. So if I have 58 times 99, instead I'm just gonna say 58 times 100. It's much easier, which I know is 5,800, okay? So, but that's for 100. So for 99, well, 5,000 and 4,897 are pretty close. So in order, order to do the overage strategy, I have to have 58 times 100 minus 58 times one and subtract them out. So I know that this one equals 5,800, so now I have to have 5,800 minus 58. So if I do the math on that, 5,800 minus 58, and you wanna do it the long way, um, doo, doo, doo. let's do all these and regroup. So I have two, I have four, seven, and five. Five, 5,742. Hmm, does it equal 4,897? No, it does not. So my answer would be false. Okay. On the last one, here I have 480 times 25 equals 12,000. True or false? Okay, well, I'm going to use my quarters method. So I'm gonna say 480 times 1 fourth equals what, okay? So remember when I do 1 fourth, I like to do 1 half first, it makes more sense. So 480 times 1 half, what's half of 480? It is 240, okay? So half of 240 would then give me a fourth, which 1 fourth of 480 would equal 120 because 1 fourth is half of my 240. So 1 fourth of 480 or 480 times 1 fourth would give me 120. But this says 480 times 25. Remember 1 fourth is the same thing as 25 hundredths or 25 cents. These are 25 holes. So I would have to move this over two place values, which means all I need to do is move this two place values. So if 0.25 of 480 equals 120, then if I want to move these two over, right, I would just need to move this over two place values. So now I have 12,000. So 1 fourth of 480 is 120, but 480 times 25 whole, right, not 25 hundredths, gives me those two extra place values. So my answer is true. And that's it for page one of the unit four pretest.